This is the second video in our series on how to help your child to pass the 11 plus. You'll notice that not all of our tips involve doing extra written work. This is because children learn in a variety of ways, including through play and life experiences. We've therefore tried to give you some extra ideas on how you can not only make the most of the study time your child does do, but also give you some ideas on activities that you can do to give your child an even better chance of passing the 11 plus. The first and possibly the easiest thing that you can do to help your child with their maths past the 11 plus is to make sure they're practicing their times tables and they don't forget them. Your child needs to learn their times tables up to 12 times 12 before they, they take the 11 plus. Honestly, you can't really expect a child to pass the 11 plus if they don't know their times tables, as not knowing these can lead to mistakes in maths questions and it also really slows them down. What I mean by knowing their times tables is you need to be able to say, what's well, six times eight? And they need to answer you just like that. Counting in sixes, for example, if it's the six times table, we don't count that as knowing your times tables because it takes too long. If you're quite sure that your child knows all of their times tables, do just double check because sometimes parents are surprised. So pick a random assortment from all the 12 of the times tables and just do a quick fire round with your child. If they're a little bit hesitant, it takes them a while to come up with some of the answers, then you know that you do need to keep practicing those regularly. In the description of this video, I'll put a link to the Dorling Kindersley 10 Minute Times Table app. This is one that we usually like to recommend for our pupils. What I like about the app is that when you've done 10 minutes, it will tell you. So your child knows that they don't need to do any more than that. It's just a quick test of their times tables each day. Do keep an eye on the children though, because some of them will just practice their one times table for a little while so that they can say that they've done it. When your child's doing their homework, if they're making a lot of mistakes and they're not checking their answers, then try assigning a few minutes at the end of their homework session where they're specifically asked to check their answers. A lot of children, if they're not sure about a question, will also just rub the whole thing out and start again, which isn't a great exam technique. So make sure your child's got a nice clean sheet of paper where they're writing down their working and then when they check their answers to the questions they can check that their working was right, they can check that they got their times tables right, that they did the addition, they didn't make any silly mistakes and they can develop that skill of checking their work. A lot of children actually really struggle with that skill so it's worth setting aside some time for them to do that at home. If you find that your child's making a lot of silly mistakes it might be worth telling them how many questions they've got wrong in a particular section, but not telling them which questions are wrong. This will mean that they're forced to have a little think about which questions are most likely to be wrong, and again, develop that skill of checking their answers. If your child's making a lot of silly mistakes and you're correcting their score at the end of the paper, then that may need to stop as it could be encouraging this. So for example, if your child got 60% the first time around, and then you're crossing that out and putting that they got 80% once they were concentrating, then there's no real incentive for them to do work properly the first time around, because they always get a do-over. So, although you need to encourage them to do those corrections, make it clear that the score that they get is that first score, and that the second one doesn't really count. Once you're a little bit harder on them with this, then usually the children will start trying to be careful the first time. Another thing that's very important with maths and developing exam technique is that your child marks questions that are taking too long or that are tricky and then comes back to them at the end. A lot of pupils can turn up to our classes with gaps in their homework, but we really want to encourage them to at least attempt an answer to that question. So by getting your child to put a mark by those, come back to them with a fresh mind and rethink, you'll really develop their perseverance and make sure that even if a problem seems tricky at the beginning, they know that they can come back to it later and increase their chances of getting it right. If you don't have time to be sitting with your child the entire time they do their homework, that's okay, a lot of parents have that problem, but just do a quick check at the end because it's really easy to see where there are gaps and make sure that they just spend a little bit of time going over those questions. If your child has left a few gaps in their work, don't feel that you have to help them with those questions straight away. Often they can do them, they just need to be encouraged to maybe think about it a different way, try a few different methods, and then see if the answer will come to them then. Finally, one very important thing 
for maths work is finding other examples of a question to do with your child. If you already have a tutor, if you're one of our pupils, then often you can just let your tutor know if your child had trouble with a question and a good tutor should find extra questions that they can do. Another way that you can do it is just coming up with some examples yourself at home. For example, in the question, a department store has 80 members of staff all together, but on Saturday, 16 members of staff are at work, what percentage of the staff is this? So here, if your child has trouble finding the percentage, what you can do is just cross out the numbers that were in the original question, change them a little, and then you've got a second question that your child can do on their own. If your child's had trouble with a particular question, it can be a good idea to come back to that a couple of days later, but sometimes you need to change the scenario around the question just to make sure that your child's really thinking and applying what they learned earlier in the week, not just doing it by rote. So here you can see I've written the second question. Pet shop has 60 animals altogether, 42 of the animals are mammals. What percentage of the animals is this? This question uses the same skills as the first one, but you can give this to your child a couple of days later to make sure they've remembered what they've learnt. Finally, you can see just an easier question at the end where there's a missing number. You can maybe write a couple of these and get your child to do those questions on the day and then a couple of days later as well. If you found this video helpful, please do give us a like at the bottom of this video and you may also wish to view some of our other videos on the 11 plus and videos with tips for younger children as well.